Hi, Peter Charles here, and let's take a look at using Fujifilm cameras for bird photography and some of the issues we can run into and the solutions for those issues, because I've run through them all and uh, it's been an interesting learning experience. So let's take a look at the results I've had. Currently, I'm using two cameras for uh, bird photography. I have my XS20 with the 70 to 300 millimeter lens. Uh, I use that more for casual photography when I'm just sort of going for a walk and I'll bring this along. It's not great for skittish birds because you can't get close enough, but for uh, the birds that are approachable, that are used to people because I'm going in parks and places like that, this works pretty good. This is the big gun though. This is the 150 to 600 zoom and I've got the X-H2 camera on it. Works great now, but when I first started using this, at best 50% of my shots were usable. All right, you know, at least 50% were out of focus and, and crap. So there were issues and I struggled and I struggled and I struggled. Yeah, uh, Fujifilm came out with an update that helped the tracking, no question. But there are certain settings that I've discovered make this a lot easier. Some of them are blindingly obvious and some of them are not. So we're going to go through those settings. So if you're going out with a, a Fujifilm camera, be it, you know, an XS20, XH2, XH2S, XT5, XT50, whatever you happen to be using, these settings are going to make your life a little easier. So let's go have a look at them. Okay, let's look at the Q menu on my camera. I've set uh, the uh, shutter priority automatic uh, for the camera. I feel that's the best uh, way for bird photography because we can lock in our shutter speed at 1 500th or 1 1,000th of a second, whatever we happen to need. I set the autofocus for continuous operation. Uh, that way the autofocus continues to track a bird while it moves or in flight or if the bird is simply moving around on a branch. I set the autofocus mode to all uh, to ensure that not only can take pictures of birds while I'm moving around, but if I see something else, I can also take a photo of that as well and the autofocus will lock in. Uh, you could set it to tracking, uh, but it will work. As far as I'm concerned, it works better if you leave it at all. This yellow warbler is a perfect example of why I set my cameras up the way I do. Uh, this bird was flitting around, uh, going in out of cover, uh, and at times it uh, was b well lit and other times it wasn't. So with my ISO range being so broad, it uh, allows the uh, camera to choose the best ISO. Here it's settled at 250 because it's bright. At 1 500th of a second, uh, I can freeze the motion of the bird as it moves. Now I dialed in an exposure compensation of minus one because uh, of the nature of the background and the areas that the bird was moving in and out of, I could have ended up with a, an overexposed image and the bird would have looked desaturated. So uh, with a minus one exposure, uh, I was able to keep the bird looking nice and yellow. And that's the thing, it's very easy to use a compensation dial to go up or down depending on what you needed. And as this bird was moving in and out of different cover, I was moving that exposure compensation backwards and forwards. Pre-shot is a very useful function. When you're trying to capture uh, images of birds that are moving rapidly, like for example about to take off from a branch or they're in flight, uh, Pre-shot uh, buffers uh, upwards of 20 images or so when you half press the uh, shutter release and then when you fully press the shutter release those images are written to the card. So you have both before and after shots of the uh, bird that you're trying to capture. I set the IBIS to continuous just to ensure that I get maximum benefit from stabilization, especially when I'm moving a large lens rather rapidly. I always set pre-AF to on and that way my autofocus is always working. Uh, I don't get any lag from the uh, image being out of focus, doing a half press having the, fit, uh, the image snap into focus, and by then the bird could have flown away. So it's handy to have this turned on. 
Okay, this is an obvious one, but uh, you have to have the subject detection uh, set to bird. Uh, you can see the other choices that you have there. It does really work. I'm surprised at what a distance this can acquire a, a bird. Also, it can often re acquire the bird when there's a twig or something in front of it. It works quite well. Okay, here's the big one. The uh, problem area that I didn't know about till I stumbled upon it by accident. And that is uh, setting the focus area to tracking. Uh, and that is making the focus area as large as possible. So we go in on the menu and use the uh, back dial and we just expand that box so it covers the entire frame. And then when we are following a bird as it's moving around, uh, it doesn't leave the focus area. And that's what was screwing me up before is that the bird would be outside of the focus area and it wouldn't work. I always turn off image display because if you don't, you can end up with uh, a real problem where you're tracking a bird in flight, for example, and as you press the shutter release, the camera says, oh, here's your picture, and now you lose track of the bird. So it's always useful to have that off. This picture of a hind bird was handheld, and I was just following the bird as it flitted around from teasel to teasel. Now, it's pretty hard to uh, keep a hummingbird in the frame, and you can see that the autofocus did an excellent job of keeping track of, of that bird as it moved around, because it was going from one teasel to another, and I was able to follow it and keep it sharp. Every picture in this series was pin sharp, right on the eye of the bird. Can't complain. Okay, there are the settings, and they do work, uh, especially for uh, moving birds, birds that are hopping from branch to branch, you're trying to keep track of them and be able to keep focus on them. Uh, when they're flying, when they're starting to take off from a branch, uh, these settings work great. Uh, I've used my custom settings to create two scenarios on the X-H2. Right now, I, I, with the X-S20, it only has four positions. So, uh, custom two is my bird setting. On the X-H2 with the 150 to 600, I've got two settings. I've got C2, which is for birds, and C5 is what I use for uh, pre-shot with the electronic shutter and uh, the uh, continuous high burst mode. That way, if I want to take pictures of birds that I'm anticipating may take flight and move, I'll put it to C5, get ready, and use the uh, capabilities of pre-shot to make sure I get a decent takeoff picture, which is almost impossible to get. I mean, you have to be super lucky to hit the shutter button at the right point uh, when a bird starts to take off. So uh, having those two set on my uh, custom functions for my custom modes, I should say, uh, makes my life a lot easier. I can pick what I want to do. So uh, that's basically the settings I use. I've been successful with them. I'm quite happy with them, but it took me a lot of struggling to get there. And uh, so I benefit from you know, my pain rather than having to go through it yourself. So give them a try. Cheers.